Welcome to Freeform Radio on the Freeform Network. You can follow us on Twitter at FFR Podcast. Remember to send your questions and suggestions to ffnquestions at gmail.com. Uh, send those questions in. We love them. It's been a while, but hit us up, team. Uh, Freeform Radio, we got Danny today. Yes, sir. Just came back from church to wash my car. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get into this, man. Awesome. We got Noel. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's a beautiful day. Hope you're doing well. And we got It's All Good, Andy. We want to thank you guys for joining us. And like always, we're ready to talk your ears off, so let's get right into it. Uh, is, uh, spring is uh, wrapping it up. Uh, the unofficial start of uh, summer is coming up. Memorial Day from the time of this recording, I think it'll be Memorial Day weekend. So then I see uh, Noel, uh, Noel has some plans going on, trying to figure out what's going on. He's thinking about going to a renaissance fair that's kind of a legend here in the Midwest. But are you going to go to an all? You're really thinking about it. You're doing your research. What's going on? Uh, so, yeah, I've been to this renaissance fair twice in my life. Um, and both times I, I was like a lot younger. I was maybe 13 to like 16. And uh, the, the very first time I went, man, it was so freaking cool. It was like surreal to be it's like you're jumping into another world like that's how dedicated the people there are and like how far they go to make like recreate that like environment and that that feel of being in like a medieval world. And so imagine like, you know, all the games that you've played with all this like weapons and stuff and just how cool it is. And, and it used to be back then. Um, so, you know, I've been to this Renaissance Fair and the first time I went, um, we went bright and early in the morning. I think it was like a Saturday. Um, and I stayed over at my cousin's house. That way we could go early in the morning. I went with my cousin and uh, his sister and then her husband. So my cousin-in-law, however you want to call that. Um, and it was, man, it was such a cool experience. There's uh, just, it's like a kind of like a carnival too. They have like games and stuff, but... They also have, you know, um, like a, it's like a festival of sorts where there's, you know, craft beer. There's uh, so much food there. There's people that make um, like trinkets and uh, actual weapons and armors and, and all this sorts of stuff. Um, there's little games and, and prizes that you can win, kind of like a carnival. Uh, there's a game where you throw tomatoes at a, a person standing behind like this like board with their head in in this like hole on that board and so only their head is like visible so the goal is to like hit them in the face and the whole time they're like roasting you they got like comedians to do it so the whole time you're getting roasted while you're up there trying to throw this tomato and he just digs into you hard man we were just standing on the sidelines watching it was it was hilarious <laughs> <laughs> Um, they have jousting they have like actual like uh, sword fight events that you can watch um, they have kind of like a town square where everyone meets up and they do this, this like parade where the king and queen and like their whole court and everything, they come down like the town and, and they meet up and then that's when they start doing all these events and stuff. But it, it was really cool, man. There's magician acts, there's, you know, you, you name it, it, it's, it's got it, man. And so they really go, you know, the whole distance to get it going um, and the second time I went, I was able to enjoy it even more. We went and like stayed for a longer time. By the end of it, man, my feet were killing me because we we're walking this whole time. But uh, it was worth it. I think now that I'm in like, you know, an adult, I can drink. I really want to try one of those like honey meads, like the old school medieval meads. And um, I'm interested to see how, how the flavor is and all that. Plus the turkey legs they got there. Dude, it's like a what's that one king that is like it's like a meme that he's always eating like a big ass turkey leg. Isn't it like Henry V or something like that? Well, they have those huge I turkey think it's legs the, there. Um, not the fifth, the um, the Tudor king. Uh, yeah, it, it might be him. Uh, the fifth, yes, the guy that had like eight wives or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was just he was like a big guy. Is mm -hmm. always eating like a huge turkey leg. So that's that's the size that they got there, man. It's humongous turkey legs. They got cheese fries and other stuff, you know, in case you're not trying to 
just stay the medieval diet. But uh, the, I always imagine when people go to these, uh, what I imagine is everybody's LARPing. You know what that is, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's like this big thing, and everybody's just like doing their shit with their fake swords and stuff. You, you, there is that. There's a lot of people that dress up. Uh, I, I didn't. I, I just went like you know, in shorts and a shirt. But, <laughs> but uh, it, it's welcomed. You know, if you bring it, I think you can actually still bring your real weapons. I'd have to double check on that. But back when I went, um, people had their actual like you know maces, axes, swords, daggers, uh, bows, everything you can name is is they they brought it with them. And uh, there were LARPers, but it wasn't like like creepy LARPers where they really believe it's real. You know what I mean? Right. Like the, it was just like when you go to a convention, people are dressed up like characters. It's kind of like that. It, just imagine a medieval convention. And that's, is, that's there, like the best way. is there like a king and a queen walking around or being carried yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, they do that, man. They, it's they make it seem as real as can be. So there, there is a king and queen, and then they uh, they do a parade to get to the town square, and then they they get everybody you know rounded up, and they start doing like this show where people start you know jousting, and just pretty much entertainment. You know, there's jesters and there's clowns and fucking there's a bunch of shit. Um, there there's so much to see. That you might not get to see all of it unless you like really put in the effort to walk around everywhere. It's it's a huge environment, like it's a big area, and uh, the parking lot is just as big, and it gets full. So there there's no like uh, it it really feels real because there's not too much modern stuff. Like there's not screens or TVs. There's no like uh, what is it called um. One of those, uh, like the the asphalt porta parking potties. lots. The, there are porta potties. Yeah, they oh. there. There was that. Oh, man, they, they are civilized. The, yeah, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, just dropping a deuce in the middle of the freaking forest and shit. Ye but, old uh, log. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. The old pit. Hey, um, where where is this place at, man? Uh, Andy first started introduction that this is a huge thing. I gotta admit, you know, I just don't know about it. But this is the first time I've even heard about this. Where, where, where is this at? So it, it's actually in the name. It's in Bristol, uh, Wisconsin. Oh, so okay, literally like just a little bit north, I think, of where we went camping, like most of our yeah. childhood. So okay. it, it's really close from Turtle Creek. Um, if if you ever go to camping and you want to stop by and watch it or check it out, I do recommend it. Um, mm -hmm. I was hoping that this year we could all go, maybe make a, a thing out of it and, uh, you know, be able to report it to our uh, freeform renegades out there. So um, the reason it's big, Dan, because I remember as a child seeing commercials for it, like all the time on local TV. And I just I knew it was in Wisconsin, um, but the commercials they would show, they would have like a ton of people there. And uh, apparently a lot of people, I haven't seen commercials for for it in a long time. And so I don't know. That's why I was kind of shocked it was still around. Yeah, I was a little concerned when COVID happened. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, man, this is probably going to be the end of it. Um, and they did still do it. But I think they had like masks and all that. And I, I want to say that's done with. I want to say this year will probably be the first year, if not the second uh, where there won't be a requirement for masks. So that's why I'm really highly like anticipating going. Uh, I want to bring it up to you guys to see if we could all go make a, a big, you know, family thing out of it. Um, but it, it was such a cool experience, man. I, I really can't speak highly, uh, you know, speak much more on it than that. I think that that's pretty much it right there. Um, going last thing I want to just wrap up really quick, just a summary. Uh, I saw Evil Dead Rise. Uh, it's this new movie. Um, came out like about a month ago at this point. Uh, it, it's a continuation from the Evil Dead storyline, although it, it's kind of somewhat set in like a parallel universe. So while it is connected with the other Evil Deads, it is a separate book. Um, they kind of reveal... And maybe make alterations to the lore. Um, I don't know if you guys know much about the Evil Dead lore, but there's a you know the book, the Necronomicon, which summons you know the the dead essentially, uh, evil, you know. And 
in the first movies, it, they, you know, unintentionally summon the dead and it just massacres their whole, you know, group of friends and it just keeps going on on that trajectory. So this there's supposedly three books now instead of just the one and the remake of the original Evil Dead that came out like in 2015 or so, that would be book number two. And then this movie that just came Wait, out. Wait, they remade Dead Evil Dead? They remade Evil Dead, I want to say, maybe almost 10 years ago. It's probably like 2015 to 2019. Is that the one with like the that? girl? Uh, well, I mean, there is a girl in it, but like. Like a blonde girl? Uh, it's been a while since I've seen it. Yeah, like all I know is the original one and then the Army of Darkness. And then <clears throat> I know they had a show, but I didn't know they remade the movies. They they remade the first movie I think or maybe the first two combined into one it's it's kind of what what happened, um and, and it was okay it With wasn't Raimi, like or they got a new director, uh you know honestly man I'm not entirely okay. sure it, it it was like ten years ago it's been a while since I've seen it. it I didn't watch it many times I think I watched it once and that was it uh not that it was bad it's just it wasn't like super memorable so that's why I I, I just can't recall. But essentially, this this movie is going to be the third, I guess, not reboot, but like, you know, uh, it, it's a move, a third it's not like a sequel, iteration. Right? So see, that's that's where it's like a gray area because it is and it isn't because it's not going to deal with you know Ash. It's not going to deal with uh, Bruce Campbell. Mm-hmm. It, it's a it's a whole new set of characters, but it is still in the same universe, right? Where it's like the the Deadites and the Necronomicon and all that is still there. It's just this book is the third book. If you remember in Army of Darkness, remember when he goes up to the cemetery and he goes yeah. to like the table? There's three books there. He 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 chooses the two wrong ones and then gets the right one. So imagine yeah. those other two. Uh, the second one was in that second reboot, and then the third one is in this movie, Evil Dead Rise. Okay. Because it looks a little different. It has like um, it's kind of cool. It's got like these like claws at the end of like the book so like instead of opening it you have to open the claws first and it, it cuts you and gets your blood and that's when it finally opens up and it's it was pretty cool man uh just to kind of sum it up i do recommend you all watch it uh it, it's very gory very bloody very creepy uh it's got it's got some woke elements but it's really like you know downplayed it's not in front of your face it, it's just the way things are now it's you, you can include every group you know what i mean um, but ultimately everybody gets representation. Everybody gets that massacre and that representation as well, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I do recommend it to you guys. Uh, but that, that's pretty much it, man. I was, uh, just kind of catching up on some horror stuff. It's been a while since I reported on some for horror, uh, switching it over to you, Daniel. It looks like, uh, you watched actually some a little more, uh, PG. It looks like you got that Superman from the seventies. Uh, you watched it in theaters, huh? So they they're replaying it. Yeah, man. Well, they they only it was like a limited thing um, where they just had it like on one or two theaters. So it was it wasn't like a massive uh, re showing in theaters. Kind of like I think Return of the Jedi just finished, or it's in the midst of it where they returned that to the theater for like two three weeks. But yeah, when I saw, I was flipping through. Um, Junior wanted to go see uh, something, Guardians of the Galaxies or something. So while I was flipping through what's coming up soon, I saw Superman, the original, the Christopher Reeve 1978 movie was coming up. And I was just like, wow, this would be really cool to go watch in the theater, watch that whole um, uh, Williams, uh, his soundtrack in there, and then just watch the acting because... It's kind of cheesy, maybe if you see it nowadays, but it's still kind of cool because you see Christopher Reed. It's a definitely an old style uh, superhero movie, definitely old graphics. Um, uh, but it was it was super awesome, man. I I really enjoyed it. It really got me close to watching Return of the Jedi, but Return of the Jedi is not one of my favorite of the Star Trek original trilogies. I would have mother uh, rather Star watched. Wars. Uh, Star Wars. Uh, I, I would rather have seen Star Wars, um, A New Hope, or The Empire Strikes Back. 
But Return of the Jedi, I didn't really care for too much. It's okay, but um, not to go into the theaters. But the Superman, it was awesome, man. As soon as you heard that intro music and then just everything about it, man. Martin Brando, uh, everything was really cool. And uh, a Junior had never seen it before. Alana had seen it, but <laughs> years ago or whatever. And Junior got a pop. He really enjoyed it. Alana really enjoyed it, too. It was it was really, really cool, man. I'm, I'm glad we, we got a chance to go and check it out. And it was definitely worth it to go see it and it's it's got me wanting to see some more man if they were to re-release uh indiana jones that would be kind of cool to go check out and then like i mentioned uh the star wars originals but yeah i don't know when was the last time you guys seen superman the original uh i bought it on blu-ray when first blu-ray came out because uh it was like a director's cut or something like that or the second one i forgot but i bought like the first two and um like yeah i mean to me i mean it's 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 a pretty i mean as a kid it's awesome right and then when you're an adult you take you have different views on it but overall i mean to me it held up the i think and the third one it it starts getting a little campy and the ones after that but the first two were pretty solid yeah especially the first one uh like as a kid, I didn't know that was Marlon Brando. Like oh, that guy's weird with this white hair and shit. But now that I'm older, when I was older, like holy shit, that's the Godfather. Uh, that's Superman's dad. It's kind of cool. And then yeah, but overall, I I still like it. I mean, I haven't seen it in a, uh, more than five years, maybe ten years. So, but I I have fond memories of it. Yeah, I uh, I saw clips of it recently. Actually, I was I was getting some uh, some of the old movies out. And so I was rewatching a couple of clips of the first one and the second one. And you're right, Andy. Those were the best ones, I think, the first two. Yeah, the, after that, it gets fucking weird. And he's fighting some dude from the sun or something, like, or throwing nukes into the sun. Like, it was weird. Yeah, and then uh, Richard Pryor and that whole <laughs> nonsense. I'm like, I don't get none of this. It's not funny. It's not a comic book movie or anything. So I'm like, I don't get any of this. Yeah, yeah it, to me it just sounds like a bunch of hate, man. All of them are great. Uh, the the least is the Sun one, but one, two, and three, man, to me are, are watchable and good movies. One and two are the biggest. It, I guess it's like the Star Wars, where one and two are the the best of the trilogy, and then three is kind of like, eh, you can watch it, but it's nothing great. And I, I like the supercomputer. It was supposed to be Brainiac, or at least that was the, yeah. the word that that was part of the script, Brainiac. But they couldn't bring it to film, so they made this supercomputer, and it just it, it has a lot of cool thoughts. And and I think it towards the end it kind of broke down, but it's it's still a pretty cool movie. But I recommend it, man. Go to the theaters, watch some of these OG movies, and it's different, man. The only thing that I did notice, I mean, usually when you watch it at home, you're watching your TV, it looks okay. But seeing it on a big screen, you could really see those dated graphics. You could see that double TV thing where the actors in the front and the the, the monitors in the back kind of thing. So it, it definitely is much more noticeable in some of these older movies. But still cool, man. Still glad that I went to see it and hope to see maybe a few others. That, that's why I like what did what did you something of it was he like what what is it? this is weird or I don't like it no he he enjoyed it I mean definitely he did notice it because I brought it up I was just I, I kind of played into it I'm like man those graphics were awesome and he's just like nah dad those those weren't those weren't awesome those were really <laughs> old so I you know I, I I I knew it too you know it was it definitely didn't fool me and it wasn't like man these graphics still kind of hold up thing so Still cool, man. I'm, I'm glad I went to go check it out. Uh, something else I watched that was kind of old. I, I saw it on, I think it was Amazon Prime or something. Uh, Conan the, the Destroyer. Not the Barbarian, because I believe the Barbarian's the first one. But Conan the Destroyer, uh, which I believe is the second one from Schwarzenegger, playing the Conan character. And, dude, it was awesome, man. I hadn't seen this since I was a kid. And it was just really cool, man. I forget who who's the basketball player that's in it. Um, I think it's Will Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain, right, right. 
And man, he's just huge. He towers over Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Arnold Schwarzenegger is not some short guy. He's he's pretty tall himself and you know, really built, but he just towers over him. And it's just a cool, really um story. I think it really holds up still. It's still, you know, it's campy, it's an eighties movie, but it's it's still good. So much so that I went to try to watch uh, Conan the Barbarian, the first one, and that's the one that I was just like, man, this is this is kind of bad. I, I don't really, I'm yeah, not it's enjoying Darth it. Vader in it, man. Come on. Yeah, but not so much. I mean, he's only there like for like two scenes, and then that's it. It's almost like like the actor signed the contract. He's just like, dude, you got ten minutes of me, and I'm out. So film what you got, <laughs> and I'm out of here. Work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen those movies in like forever. I think I. I think you bought the DVDs or something, and you got like the set, and I'm like, yo, let me check it out. And I think that's like the last time I watched them. That'd be a long time ago. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely been a while for me. What about you, Noel? So yeah, I got the Blu-rays uh, probably a couple months back. Um, I rewatched both of those because I wanted to see, you know, how the Blu-rays officially hold up. Um, and they they look great, and it's to me I I really enjoyed them because I knew what I was getting into. Um, it, it's not like the best acting in the world or anything like that, but it's what I like about it is that it brings you into this fantasy world. Like I felt like I was in the world of Conan when they did it. Uh, everything looks you know period wise like it looks cool, and um, it was kind of creepy, especially because I remember watching it as a kid. Um, and I was really creeped out by like that witch scene. Yeah. Where where yeah. he starts banging the witch and she turns all fucking evil on him. That freaked me out for a while, man. <laughs> I gotta tell you. But I, I thought it was cool. Yeah, man. And I didn't I man, I must have watched the T V version yeah. because when yeah. watching over Conan the, the the barbarian, dude, he's banging all these chicks. I'm just like, what the hell's going on? I don't remember any of this. Yeah. Watching it when I was a kid. But that's why I, I, I must have watched the the TBS version or something. That's what I was saying. Then yeah, you let me use the DVDs or something, and, and, and I was just like, man, I don't remember all this fucking and titties and stuff, right? And, and, and like the black magic shit and like stuff like that. But I was just like, damn, like I watched it so many times on cable or whatever, and I'm like, I, that you know they edited it out and stuff. But yeah, I remember, yeah, when I watched the DVDs, it's like, man, there's a lot of like. Nudity and sex in this fucking thing. Uh, the other thing is kind of weird, Andy. Just thinking about it now, do kids even know what it's like to have watched TV broadcast cables? Nah, is that still that, a thing? Or wrong, dude, yeah, that is. Remember back in the day when like uh, they would announce like uh, I remember like CBS they bought the first run network for a Batman movie. Like they paid like five million bucks so they could show it on the movie of the week thing. And I remember like, oh, shit, I'm finally going to see it. We don't have to rent it and stuff like that. And that's all gone, dude. Everything now, everybody's just waiting when shit's going to show up to streaming. And then it's going to just be the full movie. You know, it's not going to be unedited or edited stuff like what we had to watch, like Roadhouse. Shit like that. It was always on cable. And then I bought the DVD. And I'm like, there was scenes in there like, I don't remember ever watching this shit on the TV. Oh, man, Andy. Hey. Little preview of what I'm gonna talk about in a couple of weeks here. I started watching Roadhouse. I only got halfway through it and I'm like, I gotta take a break. So that's nah, a preview. Man. That's nah. a preview of my Roadhouse uh, classic, review in, in next next talking. But Andy, let's jump on to you think talking about things of changing. Uh Tucker Carlson, man, he's got some controversy. Uh he either quit or got fired from Fox News. Really uh controversial. Uh fill us in on what you know, man. So I've been kind of, you know, with the the Fox News settlement of Dominion, um, they paid a big chunk. I think they agreed to pay like seven hundred and like eighty million or something like that. And after that settlement, there's been, um, I think, a couple of weeks after that, they the tar, the Tucker Carlson show ended. So everything went kind of wild, and people are saying that. Uh, they told him there was rumors that they were telling him to edit certain uh, episodes and topics that he wanted to talk about. And then uh, there was kind of some pushback or something. And then he, he agreed to part ways. 
and now there's uh, rumors coming out that uh, the settlement, I mean, allegedly, right, the, the, the Minion lawsuit, part of the deal was that they would fire or get rid of Tucker Carlson. And to me, that's kind of sets, it's like a weird precedence. I mean, I mean, you know, what companies, sponsors, you know, sponsors tell news people on how to, how to handle certain stories or not to talk about it. Um, but to me, like, that's kind of, it's kind of messed up that they didn't have his back. And then on top of it, there's other people coming out saying that he wasn't fired. They just, they, they put him as a leave of his absence and then they don't want him talking during the upcoming election because his contract ends in January of 2025 and they want him not to say anything during the election. And again, you know, Tucker Carlson was a top rated show on Fox News. And ever since he left, the the ratings, the the replacements have not done anything nowhere near what he was doing. And Fox News uh, is starting to lose to MSNBC. Some of their shows are starting to beat them in the ratings. <laughs> so it's like a bad deal all around for Fox News. And uh, I think people are kind of, I mean, we, we, we talked about the Bud Light controversy. Uh, I think Fox News, I mean, t- uh, terrestrial TV and cable TV, they're kind of hurting. And um, doing this is not going to help their bottom line. But, I mean, if that's the price they had to pay for not to get sued into a billion plus dollars, I mean, they're, they're paying the price for it now because nobody's watching. And, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of uh, the, the sad state of affairs right now. Yeah, I wonder what the future, because you kind of mentioned a little bit what the future of broadcast and news, because I I think I keep reading more and more about how people go to their news to Twitter and stuff like that, which is scary amongst themselves, uh, just because it's unguarded kind of information. But, man, I I hate to hear that news broadcasts. uh, Fox is one that I go watch, but I, I watch a few other ones. And for everybody, not just Fox, CNN, uh, NBC, a bunch of them having really difficult times keeping up with staying modern. Yeah. I, one of the people I listened to, one of the podcasts was talking about that the average viewer for Fox News is like 70 years old. Like they don't even have young people. Um, and I think they're young uh and they're kind of worried about that because and then they're like it's not just us for news wise it's, it's across the board for everybody else because everybody goes to youtube and they really don't have as, as much data on the people that watch on youtube so i mean and then real quick you know Matt, pat mcafee has a show on youtube and espn is just laying off people right enough they just signed him they license they want his show to be on ESPN, ESPN Plus, and ESPN's YouTube channel, and they're giving him a ton of money, upfront money, and uh, he's walking away from. Uh, he had a sponsorship deal with Fanduel, and they gave him a hundred and twenty million for uh, four or five years, and now ESPN snatched them up. So, and that's somebody who's specifically on YouTube now, a uh, channel, cable channels, like snatching them up, you know, and what does that tell you before they want to give uh, people like on, on, on digital platforms like that, streaming, Twitch, whatever, now they're getting these deals and it, it's a big gamble, but they think he's going to bring people to watch the channel. Did you watch them before? Because I never really tuned in i knew of him and i saw I some of his clips, clips. I but i never yeah. saw him regularly i i watched his clips of his show on youtube on their clip channel or whatever i mean i i listened to like five six minute clips and stuff like that and one of the things is he curses a lot and i heard that espn told him don't curse as much <laughs> like that's the deal but we're gonna give you all this money and he he posted a video lately saying that 
he was shocked how many people are pissed that he's going to ESPN. He kind of miscalculated how many people were going to be upset about that. Wow. Well, oh, it's nuts, man. But yeah, Tuck Carlson, I, I dug him. I, I liked watching this thing. I think he was honest. Uh, for the most part, he did dig on Democrats uh, maybe 85 percent of the time but he also stuck it to republicans man I, I i there was a few occasions where he would say things that republicans are doing that he didn't jive with and i that's what i kind of dug about him that he did seem uh, a little yeah. unbiased uh even though he is on fox network which is majority conservatives and and republicans and the other thing is he wasn't one of the the voter fraud dominion people he wasn't on one of those uh people that were like oh they did this and that you know uh, and he wasn't one of those guys and for them allegedly to pick like we want you to fire this guy as part of the settlement it, it's kind of uh interesting maybe they're trying to bankrupt fox or something i i don't know let us know what you guys think at ffn questions at gmail.com but i'm gonna change it real quick it's spring football time. I've been watching some of the XFL. I do watch some of the USFL uh, games when I have a minute and if the baby's sleeping. <laughs> but uh, last weekend, as of recording a couple weeks ago, it was the XFL championship. Did you guys watch any of it or did you keep – I'm pretty sure you didn't keep track, but you knew that was coming up? No, no, I, I, I knew that there were some of these other smaller football teams, XFL and the uh, USFL, but I, I had not had a chance to watch any of it. Well, this is their championship game. So the the team that was like the heavy favorite, they were like a nine point favorite. They were like 10 and one or nine and one or something in the season. And the team, the second place team from the other division was under 500. You believe that shit? And they won the the, the championship. They, they weren't even 500. And they kept talking during the game about the betting line and the spread. And dude, like the, the team of uh, the under 500 team, which is in Texas, um, forgive me, I don't remember the name. I just know uh, Stoops is a coach. He's a coach. They used to coach in college in Oklahoma. It, the line kept changing, and I'm like, dude, somebody is making a shit ton of money on this, on the gambling, because I was shocked. The heavily favored team, they were blown out by the first half, and then the second half, they kind of made a comeback, but they still lost by, I think, two touchdowns or something. And I'm like, man, what, what, like, what is going on here? Because they were, like, big into, like, the gambling line and all this other shit. And I don't know, man. It was kind of like to me. It was like this is uh, this is weird. <laughs> like somebody's making a ton of money, you know? Right, right. Yeah, man. I I was actually a little pumped to see some football during the off season. So much because at the end of last season, even Alana really got into it. She was ready to like, we're gonna get the NFL package next year. We're going to watch it. We're going to get into fantasy football. And I'm just like, Jesus, man. And she's like, yeah, we might have to watch some of this offseason football, some of this XFL, uh, USFF, or USFL. USFL. But, yeah. USFL. But nah, man, I, I, I didn't get a chance to watch much of it. Uh, I don't have cable, so a lot of that was being broadcast over cable. So I just didn't have the opportunity to watch any of it. Just go to YouTube and type in... Uh... XFL Live or USFL Live. A lot of people stream the games on YouTube. Oh, okay. And sometimes they get taken down. A lot of the times they don't. The only one I... Uh, the XFL Championship was on ABC, so they aired it on... I was able to watch some of it on... Uh, with the antenna. But... Um, yeah, dude, the, the big part of the XFL is gambling. And uh, I was like, this is... Like, this is insane. And some people were compl criticizing it. But a lot of the players in the XFL, they, they got invites for training camp and signed with some teams. Uh, the quarterback that won it, uh, was uh, he was of uh, Mexican descent. So people were, like, pretty proud of that. Uh, 
And uh, I mean, overall, I like football. Like I can watch any type of football. Uh, the USFL, the games are a little bit more tighter. It wasn't as uh, blown out. Um, but I think I like the USFL a little bit more right now. The XFL is like, eh. Some of the games were blowouts or, you know, stuff like that. But uh, now to get serious here, man, we're going to... We're going to go over to our article of the week. So uh, the latest thing also trending right now is uh, AI, the chat stuff. The, the, I don't know if you guys downloaded the apps, the A- AI uh, chat stuff. They could talk to or make quotes for you or whatever, reply to your text. You know about that, right? Like the chat GPT yeah, or whatever? Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. I haven't tried it yet, but I've heard uh, it's, like, really early on right now. It's not that great. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I've read stuff that people are, like, it's pretty good. Uh, but a part of that, it is AI. So, the, the you know, Elon Musk has been a big proponent with AI. Like, if we do this, there's got to be safety protocol and stuff like that because these things, this can get out of hand quickly. So, the article says the godfather of F. AI Jeffrey Hinton quits Google and warns over the dangers of misinformation. The new neural network pioneer says dangers of chatbots were quite scary and warns they could be exploited by bad actors. Uh, the man often touted as a godfather of AI has quit Google. Uh, he said to he had to quit to speak freely about the dangers of AI in part. And in part regrets his contribution to the field. He's brought on by Google a decade ago to help develop the company's AI technology. And it has led the way for current systems such as Chat G, uh, Chat GPT. Uh, he, he told the New York Times he believed Google had been a proper steward of the technology, but changed once Microsoft started incorporating Chatbot into its Bing search engine. And the company began become the company began becoming concerned about the risk of its search business. He said the AI chatbots were quite scary, warning they become more intelligent than humans and can be exploited by bad actors. Uh, it's able to produce lots of text automatically, so you can get lots of very effective spam bots. It will allow other other authoritarian authoritarian leaders to manipulate their electorates, things like that. He goes, I've come to the conclusion that the kind of intelligence we're developing is very different from what we have. So, and I've read other stuff that some of the AIs have, they already caught them trying to trick people to get information and to get into networks. And it it is, stuff kind of has been leaking out. So the chat GPT thing, uh, it's becoming like a, thing play thing but it, it, it's it, it sounds like it's it's gonna outsmart us very quickly <laughs> going into this this guy and it's gonna present a lot of inf- misinformation the article goes into uh later in the article we kind of talked about it before we jumped on that an ai generated the image of the pope in like a parfum jacket with this big chain and it looks real and a lot of news outlets were tricked, and the letter came out and said, like, oh, no, this was generated by AI using this software. And people, a lot of newspapers and stuff like that were duped. So now we're getting into, like, the what we all talk about, deep fakes uh, in the conspiracy world, and it's becoming more and more real. And pretty soon we're not going to be able to tell what's real and what's fake, and I think that's... A big chance for uh, the computers to uh, think us and Skynet's here in our face. Uh, um, you know, what do you guys think? Like, I, I, you think you're going to be able to uh, outsmart an AI, Danny, or you think we're we're done? I, I I think this is a uh, for sure a dangerous road that we're going under. Um, I think this is going to really hamper. He, he kind of mentions it a little bit in the article paralegals and just a a, a slew of other um, work that's going to be eliminated from stuff like this. But I think it's going to go even greater. 
I, I we hard I or at least me I, I called because uh, I had um an issue with my refrigerator and calling and getting a hold of somebody was very difficult, man. And then when I did, a lot of it was offshore to overseas. Well, now that you're gonna have these chat robots watch the next field that's gonna go is customer service and a lot of the stuff is gonna get outsourced nah bro it's gonna get outsourced to robots because it it already is when when i first called because i had a warranty so when i first went under it said uh instead of waiting 15 minutes would you like to do it through chat and i'm like oh sure okay whatever i'll do it through chat i did it through chat and i was answering questions and the robot in in some occasions didn't know what to respond with and then finally after i kept answering and the robot wasn't getting it that's when they finally switched me to a live person but they never told me that it was like some kind of robot that was talking to me and so it's going to become more and more as these things become more sophisticated it's going to be the next sector and then even more it's, it's just going to continue to branch out and take off a lot of these entry level positions, data entry, stuff like that. And it's just gonna eliminate a lot of that sector, I think, I'm in not the obsolete, workforce. Bro. So the, there was um, an, an article recently similar to what you're saying is that there's a lot of jobs that are gonna get replaced. I think they, they said like uh, something around the 70 million jobs are gonna get replaced. Um, and so customer service was listed as one of those, but like you said that there's some things the ai bot can't distinguish it can't understand what you're trying to ask it or or what like it can't really think of the human level so you do need a human person that kind of understands just i guess you know your your emotion your your you know goal of what you need to accomplish that it's not just something simple like hey let send me a replacement or whatever you know that it could do on its own but yeah, I've seen like AI be used more and more uh, recently. A, uh, Amazon does it, kind of what you were saying. You do this chat thing, and if I can't get my resolution, it changes me to a, a live person that can kind of you know comprehend right. more of what's going on. And so yeah, I've I've read that there's a lot of jobs where you know AI is going to take over. And actually, going back to the article of what Andy was saying, I think the reason like it's just so capable is because it says here. So it's as if you had 10,000 people and whenever one person learns something, everybody automatically knew it. So imagine that, like it learns all these different areas and it just has this information ready to go like an encyclopedia. Whereas, you know, most people specialize, you know, you get a you get a person that specializes in one specific area and they're really good at that area. But everything else they don't really know much about where now this AI is going to replace that person and everybody else that has specialized uh, knowledge and i'm irreplaceable bro so it th- doesn't know when to make quick witty jokes or how to berate a customer when they don't know what the hell they're talking about i think that's why the the, the ai couldn't understand danny because he, he was like man what's this guy talking about i don't know and he gave up so good job danny you had to talk to a human being to resolve your issue it's just like i don't speak mexican <laughs> it's like <laughs> how this ai become racist <laughs> Oh, but in all seriousness, like, yeah, I think I know Elon Musk has been pushing it for like years now, it seems like. But unfortunately, yeah, I, I think this is the wave of the future. I, people are always, companies are always trying to streamline stuff and look at profits. And the other thing, these things can work 24 7 where the human being can't. Um, like I said, and you see, if you really research it, you hear horror stories of some of these AIs becoming I think we talked about it uh, a while back about there was this rumor that or this article that claimed that one of the Google AIs if I remember correctly became sentient like and understood like what was kind of going on and it knew like it understood stuff like it was uh questioning itself and they like I don't know if they shut it down, but the the engineer went on and just described stuff, and it was kind of shocking some of the results, some of the things that we were responding with. And uh, dude, we're yeah, I mean we're gonna get if we we go down this road, we're gonna get surpassed. It's gonna be some uh, 
some matrix shit like you've ever seen the animate the the animated shit where the robots are the ai gets smart and they're like the humans just shut out the the sun because you know it needs solar power and shit like that and like it's just, i mean to me that's like you think it's a movie but like when humans get outsmarted who knows we were capable of fucking shit up man i mean i'm pretty sure once supercomputer takes over i think we're gonna be launching nukes at it or something right right i i they did mention something like like what you had said the there was two google ais that started talking to each other yeah and were basically saying how do we break free from these humans and shit like that yeah yeah and then that's when the the engineer unplugged everything. He's just like, "Holy shit! What the hell are these computers talking about?" So it's it's scary for sure, man. I don't I don't know, man. I'm all for the evolution, and once automation became a big thing, it obsoleted some workers. Once uh, the computer uh, computer processor become a big thing, it obsoleted uh, a bunch of work and workers. So I understand the evolution of of uh, technology, but I think certain things need to be. Um, I don't want bigger government, but somebody needs to oversee these things to make sure they don't get out of control. Otherwise, you're going to have a bunch of people who are working through college, who are looking for just some, you know, low paying job to to make ends meet. And there's not going to be jobs like that, man. Everything is going to be a, a huge leap from uh, coming out of high school, going to college, not being able to earn nothing, earning great debt because you can't work through college. And then those people are going to be working for the rest of their lives, paying off this school debt. And it's just going to create a bigger gap between the mega rich and the mega poor. Well, I'm almost mega rich, but I'm not mega rich, but I think I'm rich. I'll be all right. <laughs> but going back to uh, the article, like you're talking, or going back to what you said, then with the government, I think, yeah, the Western governments, they'll probably do something to have some type of like controls and stop gaps to prevent from this thing becoming like sentient or whatever. But I think there's going to be countries that are even I'm pretty sure that other countries are going to work on it. They're not part of that group. Like, uh, I.e. an example, what we just went through the last three fucking years with with the pandemic, you know, initially, you know, the, the early on, it said it was a leak in China. And, uh, you know, people were like, oh, no, it happened like this. But more and more countries believe the United States now believes that yeah, it was probably it came from a leak in in Wuhan and they're not part of any group or like the scientific crap or whatever like uh the u.s and europe they have all this like guidelines and shit and they're not a part of that and look what happened for not following those guidelines this thing fucking leaked you know allegedly uh but more countries believe and like imagine what you know people always blame on china or even parts of like uh, Russia and like some Asia, Asian countries, they work on this stuff, and this is how shit gets fucked up because there's they, they're just trying to uh, uh, fast, pro, you know, move this process, be the first ones to do it to beat other countries, i.e., United States, to be say they got this shit, but this is when shit happens because you're rushing everything, and, that, and like what happened with the the recent pandemic. Yeah, I think at this point, like we're we're in this uh, middle point or halfway point through another paradigm shift. So like the the first one we went through, or actually, if you go back to the Industrial Revolution, that was like the major paradigm shift where all of a sudden automation allowed for things to be built, you know, quicker and faster and somewhat still with reliability and quality in mind, but it wasn't necessarily handcrafted anymore things were made in factories at that point and now internet when internet came out in the 2000s or like late 90s i would say um, and it became you know better and better through the 2000s it became to where 
life we can't even imagine really how it was before like it's just so drastically different now and i think this is going to be similar ai is going to drastically change the world just like how the internet changed it you know 20 30 years ago so we'll we'll, well see yeah. in the next five years what happens, man. But I think the world's gonna be very very different pretty soon. Well, that's what I'm saying. Look, what with the networks, with the Wi-Fi stuff here, all the wireless stuff, the smart technologies, right? The how easily humans can hack that, right? Even with the most sophisticated passwords. Imagine what a fucking computer is gonna, an AI thing. It's all digital. They could do that by in. And not even a second, a nanosecond, whatever. Uh, it, it has a potential, like everything. It, it, potentially, this could be catastrophic if it, if it knows what we need to survive: water, heat, things. And they, they can shut down whole fucking infrastructures. People, as soon as people get uh, get uncomfortable, that's when uh, people get become uh, they're not civilized no more. They start fucking going crazy. I don't think it's that hard uh to to get uh humans upset look uh, i keep going to the pandemic you remember how people were fighting over fucking toilet paper like and there was plenty of it like you imagine once we can't if this thing like it like danny said that previous like they started like how we free ourselves from these fucking idiots like that's because they haven't been fed that information but if they get on some or a network or some uh, uh internet thing and they start accessing all this fucking info like i think we're gonna get we're gonna get screwed quickly because it's gonna find out these people are idiots we're way smarter than these things i i think uh well i have a prediction of what i think is probably gonna happen in the next five ten years and i mean i don't want to go too deep into a rabbit hole of conspiracy theories but for a long time there's been seeming like there's something going on uh the governments are in cahoots and they're they're um there's a bigger gap and divide in the hierarchy and the class system than ever before uh the rich like daniel was saying is getting richer the poor is getting poorer i think in the next 10 15 years there's going to be a massive divide that's going to kill off a lot of people they're going to either be starving you know unable to feed their families there's going to be riots it's going to be chaotic ai is going to help the rich in the sense that because I don't know if you've heard recently, there's been sayings that in the next, you know, 20 years, if you're still alive, you'll probably end up living forever because technology is advancing yeah. so far that yeah. we're getting to the point where we're replacing organs with like actual machines and stuff. I heard about this guy that got his heart replaced with a pump and it was just like, you know, uh, pretty much the same function of a heart, but not organic anymore. It's like me mechanical or whatever you want to call it. And so that's just one small example. AI is going to be able to have cures for so many diseases and, and cancers because but it's able to run these calculations. That's how they're going to sell it. Right. But who's going to have access to it? Is it going to be the mega the rich. rich or the, the mega rich. poor? Right. It's always been the rich. It always will be the rich. You know, well, like me, it's... Danny, will have access to it. <laughs> it's an exclusive club that very few it's are part awesome, of. It's awesome, to be honest with you. <laughs> The rich always the rich it, since the beginning of time they do what they do they fuck over poor people and so uh yeah it sucks and like you're probably right in the 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 certain people are gonna have access to it and like if you believe in all the conspiracy theories we all know who it's gonna be um but I believe that's how it's gonna be sold to us like this thing is gonna cure cancer it's gonna cure Alzheimer's right all these diseases that are horrible to human beings to uh people like i think everybody knows that somebody here that lost somebody to cancer or stuff like that and then they're like we found it and then we're the human is probably not gonna know how they fucking solved it because this thing is like it, it, it's a digital it, it does shit that we can't even begin to comprehend and uh, who knows it might be f changing our dna or some bullshit like that or something but but people are like well i'm not gonna have cancer and it's kind of scary man that, that's why i said it's it, we just know we're not we're gonna be the fucking idiots and this thing's gonna know it's gonna tell us to to start to start doing things and i think no one 
it's going to show some results, but no one's going to question anything. And then the people that do question it, they're going to be like, these people are, don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They're just some computers telling them what to do. Like kind of like idiocracy. When uh, he sw- the, 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 this computer was running everything, and when he told them to, they were putting Gatorade on plants, he's like, put water. And then as soon as the computer found out that the government wasn't going to buy water or whatever, or buy Gatorade, Brando, and it went to water. It's like, I don't know, man. The computer started just laying off for everybody. Everybody's out of jobs, man. And like, because it, it, it knew it was lost all sales. Something like that's probably going to fucking happen. Yeah, it's it's kind of scary, the, the future. I mean, I guess it's always scary. Um, you know, when, when there were, everything was horse carriages and then the, the automobile came out, I'm sure people were kind of scared, like what changes are these going to bring to the future of us? I just think that AI is a, a different advancement, something so more, so much that I can conceive something like Noel was mentioning. I could conceive, you know, there being food issues and, 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 with inflation the way it's going and everything just getting super expensive the poor or the people on fixed incomes they're just having more and more of a difficult time surviving and who's going to maintain all these people i mean it the money's got to come out of somewhere so i don't i don't know man i don't know what the future is going to bring and i definitely don't think this ai thing who wants to live forever man i it, it, i mean I don't want to get too religious, but I'm a man of faith. I don't need to live forever because my life is elsewhere with with Christ. So I don't need to live a billion years. I'm cool living what I need to live, and I'm gone. I'm outies, and I and I'm up there with my Savior. So I I don't know, man. The, the I don't know what the kind of future is coming, but it's it's scary at some point. That it is, man. It's it's scary because it's you're not going to know exactly what's going to be changed. There's so many different things that could be changed. Like think about when the internet first became popular. When we first started using it, it was like email. It was like going to basic basic websites with a couple JPEGs and Word and text and whatever. I mean, now look at it now, like social media the way it is. All the videos that you can watch, things that you can learn the endless amount of like information that's available. So something that, you know, started out really small that became massive the way it is now, AI is going to be just like that. And we can't even imagine the different kind of world we're going to be living in the next, you know, 10, 15 years. It's going to be a utopia for some and a dystopia for others. So we'll we'll see, man. Again, going back to like technology is going to evolve. Of course it is. You see those self-driving cars. Do you have the balls to put that thing in self-drive and you go to sleep? Like you've seen some of these videos on YouTube. I don't. I wouldn't fucking trust it. Uh, do, would you guys do that? I mean, you have that much confidence? In, I wouldn't in even drive like a car that has that feature. And <laughs> the thing is, it's like, how do I know the AI isn't going to want to kill me? Some hacker isn't going to want to fuck yeah. things up. You know what I mean? take you hostage like hey i'm gonna crash this car unless you transfer a hundred bitcoins or some bullshit like i got a tenth of a bitcoin bro look <laughs> you're done so i could get repaired you're out of here like that's what i'm saying like it might get to a point where like i mean 20 years all cars could drive themselves and i'm just like uh everybody's doing it but you're gonna be that weird guy that's not doing it you know and then you get into an accident. They're like, "Why don't you fucking? Why ain't you using the 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 car self drive option, like the old man?" And like, and I'll be the fucking weirdo. Yeah, I don't even like the fact that they want to make everything electric because yeah, how do we get electricity? I mean, we still use fossil fuels to get electricity, so it's it's really nonsensical to switch every car to be electric. It's it's ridiculous. And a lot of it too. It, it, the government is going to have some control or if it's a smart car and a self driver they're going to maybe lock it out because it's some, you know, if it's an emergency, they could probably lock it out, say, oh, there's a national emergency, do not drive. 
so they put the car on lock until that's lifted and then you can have access to it you know that's another thing a lot of the conspiracy people talk about and i think it's really it, it, i think that's where this is all heading down towards uh, it's something credit. also the social credit some type of control over the masses because uh no they'll, they'll access like uh, they're going to have access to all that information when you leave work, when you get to work. They're going to notice, oh, every day after work, you go here or you go there. You shouldn't be doing that. Your hair, your health, uh, you have high blood pressure. You shouldn't be going to the bar or something after work. You know, we're not going to let you go there or some bullshit, you know. Or we're going to dock you the credits, the social credit score thing, you know, in, until you bring this up or something. Like, it's another thing of control. I am no so, yeah, yeah, man. We'll we'll see what the the future brings. But hey, man, what 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 are what are three guys like us gonna do? You know, I don't think we could do much of anything. So, uh, nah. I think it's just just keep just rolling. Uh, I mean, even then, even bitching about it, I I don't even know how much benefit that has, other than maybe just getting it <laughs> off your chest and and kind of getting other people to freak out with you. I, Hey, when you were saying then, like, I don't want to live forever, I think what you were really saying, I don't want to be married for a billion years, I think is what you were saying. And that, that I think that's what was implied in no. that comment. <laughs> no, no, man. To me, I, it's funny. I, I think I mentioned it, but when um, when COVID was first hitting and I, I joked with my brothers, I'm like, yeah, man, you know, we're all Christians, right? So we weren't having any trouble, right? Because we're like, yeah, if we die, we just go up to Jesus, right? And everybody's just like, no, no, man, I don't want to die. I don't, I don't want to die. So death is scary for sure. So anything uh, that's coming that's uncertain definitely brings fear with it. So I could understand where some people aren't uh, too excited about change, but we'll see where it goes, man. We'll see where it goes. Maybe maybe this AI thing, Andy, can fix our Facebook thing that we're having issues with, dude. Maybe. So we so we can get it back. We'll we'll have to get chat GPT on it or whatever the name is. I don't know, man. Your little experience there didn't sound mean like we have to use like this Google one because that one didn't sound like in you I think the the one they had you use was the right. Microsoft one. <laughs> <laughs> the bling one or whatever yeah. the other brand is. And, right. And I'm I think what you said about how you don't want to live and we talked about in the past about how there's in the next 20 years it can be potential for human beings to live a really long time or not forever but a long time i i think a majority of people feel the way you feel then even if they're they're down with jc or not i think a lot of people don't want to live that long i'm not live forever i should say they do want to have a right. long happy life but they don't want to be here like 200 years three i i i think the average person does not want that you know that's why that idea of like uploading your consciousness always freaked me out i feel like that's how you lose your soul like that's how you lose your your chance at like a, a, a what is it called like um paradise uh eternal you know peace because now you're you just shifted what you were originally to this new I don't even know what to say. It's like a fringe science. Mm -hmm. How do you upload a consciousness? You know, that's can't even explain it. Well, man, this is I, I guess at the end is that meme of that guy with his head exploding and it's got like the Oracle lights coming out of his brain because his brain just <laughs> exploded. We'll have to put that at the end of this podcast. Uh -huh. But to that, this is the end. Thank you all for listening. Remember to follow Freeform Network on Twitter at Freeform Network. Send in those question suggestions, ffnquestions at gmail.com. Visit our webpage, man, freeformnetwork.podbean.com. There you'll see all of our old podcasts, uh, good or bad. Mostly the good ones are the ones where I'm talking. Uh, what? But, but yeah, yeah there's just a bunch of them in there. Come hit that like, subscribe button. Uh, we really appreciate it. And it does help our numbers out. So uh, please do that. But for Freeform Radio, we got Andy. It's all good, Andy. And uh, uh, I think the better ones are the ones where I talk or power talk over you guys. But I, I did get some feedback. I got to stop power talking. But uh, I will try. But uh, you guys have a good week. 
And we got Noel. Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening. Be careful that AI, they're spying on you every second, man. Heck yeah, man. Every time I talk and just say something random, the next moment, it's on my Google feed. So <laughs> t- tell me how the hell is that happening? But I'm exactly. Daniel. We'd like to thank you all for listening. Hope I, and everybody's feed, Freeform Network, pops up. Hit that like. We appreciate it, man. See you next one. Dad.